everybody. Welcome to News by Muse. We are here. It is Sundance Festival week and uh, well, two weeks, but we'll count it for this week only because this is what we're covering. And we got a great film called Meka, the girl from another galaxy. We have director Ham Tran and also uh, Jenny Trang Lee. Am I correct? Okay, cool. I didn't want to mess up any names, but um, (laughs) wow, this I saw the film lucky enough to get a screener and such a great heartwarming film truly enjoyed it what where did the story come from and how did it all come about well um the the film is actually inspired by an old um czechoslovakian tv show made in the 1970s right and and it, the show was called uh, the girl came out of flat fell out of blue sky and so it was about a little alien girl who lands in the mountains of the Slovak, um, you know, Czechoslovakia. And she meets up with a, a group of, of, of kids and becomes their friends. But then they have this huge delegation where she reveals that she's an alien. So that show was made in the 1970s. But if, you know, through, you know, the, the communist connection, it made, um, it found a home in, you know, Vietnamese TV in the 1980s, late 80s and early 90s, and found this huge audience Right. To the point where like people were naming their kids Micah. You know, you 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 go to Vietnam, if you go to Ho Chi Minh City now or you know, even in Anahua, you see like shops that are named Micah. Right. Yeah. And and it's all because of this TV show. And so um BHD is the studio that that came to me uh, with this project because you know the the head of the studio, she was a huge fan of the TV show herself. And so they have been trying to develop this for like four years and they just couldn't find the right director for it. And I was I was in 2018, I was um, sort of struggling with with the the grief of losing my mom. My mom had just passed away. And so BHD sent me this um, the outline. And when I read what the story was about, a little boy who's trying to overcome the grief of losing his mother and meets this alien girl who helps restore his life, right? And he becomes her best friend. Uh, I was like, that's that's me, you know, and I can completely relate to that. And so, you know, I, there are a lot of scenes that's really drawing on my own experiences as well um, that I put into this. So, so for me, this film became sort of my love letter to my mom, right? Um, and so that's that's why there's that dedication right at the very end of the film. That's the first mm-hmm. line. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing. Like, I I have had the same experience. I lost my mom 15 years ago. Uh, to breast cancer Mm -hmm. and when I saw that scene I just started bawling because I could Mm -hmm. I could relate I could relate what it's like Mm -hmm. to lose a mom and to see her in the hospital and the last time minutes you get to spend with her and you pulled that out so well and that little boy who who's in that scene just kind of like just tears your heartstrings because he sells it so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing, isn't he? Amazing. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and also just being left with a, a father where you don't connect to the father that well. Mm-hmm. So that's another big theme of like the father trying to understand the son. And obviously he was much closer to the mom. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of like a lot of that as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's such a, it was, it starts off so, I'm like, huh? And then you're like at the end, just like so happy. Mm-hmm. And you get, it literally pulls in every emotion <laughs> throughout this film. You get laughter, you get sadness, you get, you get happiness. It's, it's just so well done. Um, where did you find the kids to play, play these roles? Uh, the, the main kid, his name is Fu. And I, I came across uh, him when I was doing a commercial, mm-hmm. you know, for Glucerna. And so we had cast is sort of like a, a, a documentary style commercial where we interviewed his mom, interviewed his grandmother. You know, Blue Cern is that drink for elderly, right? For mm-hmm. elderly. And so he had one little part, which is to bring his grandmother a glass of Blue Cern at the end. And, but he was so sort of, he could, he was, he was fine being in his own world until, until he was, his shop was ready. You know, and so he wasn't like fussy or anything like that. And I was like, he's an interesting kid. He's got a great look. You know, he's about the right age for, for Micah. And then at the time I was, we were in pre-production. And uh, while we were doing that commercial, we were offered another commercial for Insure. And so that one stars a little boy. There's a lot of milk commercials. In right, a lot of milk commercials. <laughs> yeah. so, hey, if it works, so, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> so I was like, I should test them out. And then, and then the, you know, I love telling the story because on that first day we were shooting that milk commercial, 
uh, it was a scene where they're on, on on a hill in a park and they're supposed to like, he and like four of his friends are running across trying to fly a kite. And so we bring the kids and we sit them on the grass and we're getting ready for the shot. And like not more than five minutes go by and the other kids, they start going, oh my God, it's so hot. Oh my God, can we go back in? Are we gonna do this shot yet? And Fu, this little boy just turns to me, he goes, quiet, be quiet. We're here to work, not to play, right? You have to work to make money and then you can play. Right? <laughs> and I was like, that's my kid. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. He's, he's got the right work ethic. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. my kid. He's know? like, Jenny, Jenny, I found I have this kid. I have he's perfect for him. Like, great, we'll call him in, you know. And actually, we had a casting a casting director named JB Maitahib. And JV is actually an actor in Journey from the Fall, which is Ham's first film that was at Sundance. And so yeah. um, for Micah, we have four people that are that worked on Journey, which I was an office coordinator, you know, the very mm -hmm. beginning of my career. <laughs> uh, JV was an actor. Um, and then Chris Wong was a composer oh, for both. Mm -hmm. And so um, so JV was an amazing casting director. He found, so Micah is actually from Hanoi. So we were we're mostly in, in Saigon, in Ho Chi Minh City. And, you know, we we couldn't fly out there, but we had some young filmmakers just, you know, do, do like a quick cast video for her and when she came in you know she because Micah doesn't have that many lines yeah. so she just like you know looked at the camera slowly and had like I think I don't know maybe two or three lines and we just saw that her eyes through her half her face <laughs> and we're like that's her you know they're like <laughs> she is adorable right and then um and then and then also it's just kind of a happy coincidence that because she's from the north her accent is like northern Vietnamese accent which is very different from the southern Vietnamese accent so it kind of worked out in the film that I she's actually alien. Into the script. yeah yeah <laughs> but, so the joke in the in the film when 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 home goes oh you're from Hanoi I thought you were an alien you know that was a good <laughs> that was a joke that him went in after and um but and then, JV also found Tintin I yeah think. so JV also found Tintin which is which plays Gobeo our 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 favorite chubby sidekick oh my gosh show stealer freaking yeah. amazing like he that kid has been so when we shot the film all three of them were eight years old but Tintin Ten has been performing since he was four and he's if you you go down a youtube hole you will see so many videos of him on stage singing dancing rapping singing vietnamese opera Kai Lung. Mm -hmm. And just, and and basically the whole film, he was just like super, you know, he's a stage actor. So everything he does is like, oh my, what, what? You know, it's great. Yeah, and, and, him, and, and him basically, and the, yes. <laughs> so him basically the whole movie is like, less, 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 less. Yeah. But yeah, so we just had a great, yeah. Yeah, so what is it like to be back at the Sundance Film Festival? It, um, it's been a, a while, right? It's been like 15 years since the last time you were there? In 16 years, yeah, yeah. we were there. In uh, 2006 with Journey from the Fall. And for me, it, what a great, you know, homecoming. Um, and it's because the first film was also a very personal film. You know, it, it's about uh, Vietnamese um, refugees who come to America, like boat yeah. people and you know, re-education camp experience. And so it was, you know, there were all stories that, that Vietnamese American families, we all knew like very well, you know. Um, and so that being such a personal film and then coming back again with Micah, is another very personal film to me. Um, but what's great is that, you know, we sort of come full circle where, you know, like 16 years ago, the films that are about Vietnam or Vietnamese films that get shown still sort of are related to the war, the Vietnam War, you know? And so 16 years later, it's not about the Vietnam War, it's about modern Vietnam. It's a glimpse into to seeing what Vietnam present day is like. And so I wanted to use as much of the beautiful landscape that we have as possible, like Da Nang and then that beautiful hill and Bana Hills is that, that, you know, that cool sort of out of this world, out of this time, you know, resort at the top of the mountains in Da Nang, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what was perfect about it is that, you know, they had these castle-like structures, which then I was like, oh my God, that's, it's sort of mirroring the TV show, right? Because in the Czech Republic, you know, when when on the, the old TV show, they actually flew by a castle. <laughs> so I was like, that I have to have this in the, in the film now. So there are a lot of these things that are sort of like you know interwoven into the film, and it was such a great way to be able to bring this back, coming back the second time to Sundance, with a modern glimpse into Vietnam. And then the first one was sort of looking back into the history of Vietnamese Americans and how we got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing that I really love about your work i did go back and see that film i was able to because a friend of mine oh. had it and gave it to me to try to see and just 
to take a look at before I did the interview. And it was a really like you, like you shoot some amazing films. It's like, I, I love them. I love them. And I'm one of the few, uh, I'm hey. Latino and I have, and I'm, I don't know Vietnamese, but I love just reading the subtitles, getting that feeling, getting that emotion. And I think more people need to see films that are not, that have subtitles on. I know Americans yeah. sometimes don't like watching films with subtitles, but you have to see these films. They're so mm -hmm. great, beautifully okay. shot. And, and mm -hmm. Micah is another one that needs to be seen. People need to see this because it's so well done. And I think uh, the whole family is really going to enjoy it. Uh, what's next for the film after Sundance? Uh, well, you know, uh, Jenny and I were part of a company called East, you know, and, and our goal in creating the company and uh, the other one of our other partners, his name is Bao and he his film was uh, Be Water and it showed at Sundance two years ago. And so our goal as a company was is to bridge um, Vietnamese uh, cinema with the world audience. Right. And so sort of like to show that we're not just art house films and we're not just films about war. The war right. <laughs> yeah. We're about contemporary you know, and with amazing storytellers, right? Mm -hmm. And so giving opportunities for local filmmakers too, to make projects that will actually go out outside of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so that's the most um, exciting thing. So we actually have a slate of films that, that we've got lined up uh, to shoot. Um, and I have to say that actually the, the Latino culture and the Vietnamese culture are very similar. similar. Yes. Very, similar. very similar. You'd be yeah. surprised. You'd be surprised. Yeah. And, well, and I think it's that whole idea of like when you're more when you're more culturally specific, mm -hmm. you become more universal. Right. So yeah. it was like by, you know, and we talk about this sometimes because both Ham and I have been living in Vietnam for over 10 years and making mm -hmm. films there, you know, even though we were mm -hmm. both Vietnamese American, we grew up in America. But like, there's something about making films in Vietnamese for Vietnamese people with Vietnamese actors. It's like a different kind of, there's a depth to it that, mm -hmm. we, that we really connect to. And we hope that we can tell these stories, you know, to everybody. Oh, I agree with you completely. Like where I live in LA, is a, there's a big Vietnamese community around us. And I've grown up around oh, yeah? that. Yes, uh, here in Rosemead, there's a big Vietnamese community. Oh, oh Rosemead, yes. 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 Or, yeah, so um, I I've grown up around like Oh, okay. <laughs> so like, you get <laughs> to Rosemead experience- has amazing food. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Uh, I mean, and then they have, uh, they just had new Chinatown now is what they call it in on a valley. And you get to experience so many different cultures. Oh. And, and I think through food and through film, you really get to grow and you mm -hmm. get to see what other people are like, especially in different cultures, different countries. Uh, how can people in the United States see this film after Sundance? Because I know Sundance is kind of booked and it's kind of hard to, to get to be <laughs> able to see this film because everybody jumps into Sundance. Where can they see that in the United States? Uh, um, hopefully soon, because, you know, we're, okay. we're looking at a couple of uh, several companies who've expressed interest. And so um, the release date for Vietnam is going to be at the end of May. And so hopefully we'll find a company um, that uh, that's very interested. Uh, we've actually, uh, there's a company that's bought my previous film and they're very, very interested in, and they want to have a theatrical release as well. So hopefully, you know, sometime by the end of May, we'll yeah. be able to have a theatrical release. And hopefully we'll have another conversation to talk about our theatrical release. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I would love I to. I hope to be able to talk on TV again, yeah. Yeah, et cetera. We hopefully we could do this in person instead of, <laughs> via zoom yes I know, that, that is always the hope we should do it over far we should do yes it. Yeah, definitely. We'll uh, you know what i think that's a great great idea i i love it i think it's great uh and i will i'll be i'm down for it i'm literally down for it. Uh, <laughs> but, yes but thank you so much for stopping with us and being a part of muse tv this is our 10th anniversary and love to have you a part of that for our wow. 10th anniversary. Happy anniversary. And thank you so much. And we cannot wait till the film comes out because this is going to be something that is going to reach a bunch of different people because it's so well done. I truly loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank thank you so you, much, Michael. Michael. No problem. And if you want to learn more about the film, we're going to put links in the bottom. And uh, oh, great. thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.